Hello and welcome to Toyploy 2 and today we're going to be looking at how I made one of the incidental animations for my main channel Toyploy. Now if you've watched my channel over the years you'll know that I like to recreate intros and animations that you see on other TV shows and movies and this time I thought I'd try and do something from Star Wars because I don't have that many Star Wars themed pieces at the moment. So today we're going to look at how I created the Death Star in range sequence in a Toyploy theme for the channel. The first thing to do is find as many images as I can of the sequence. Sequence. And as you can see here, I found a pretty good shot showing uh, how the Death Star looks and how the planet looks and all of the details that you see. Once I've got that, I go into Photoshop and try and recreate the elements that I know I'm going to need to make that sequence and animate it. The software that I'm using for this project is HitFilm Express, and this is an older version from 2021. I'm also using an old version of Photoshop, which is Photoshop CS5. So here we are in Photoshop and as you can see I've got the image that I want to recreate here and I try and break it down into the main elements. So first up we can see that there is a grid in the background made up of some blue crosses. That's a fairly straightforward thing to make so I made this image which is exactly that. It's a set of blue crosses on a background that's all it is. It doesn't do anything more than that. We will be moving this in the sequence once we get back into HitFilm. So that's the uh, basic setup for that shot. We then also need a version of the Death Staff. And for that, I'm going to be using the tab hole of my logo. So I created two versions of that. You can see here, this is one version. So that is the tab hole with a green finish and a little bit of detail around the edges. That is saved as a PNG with a transparent background. I also created this version, which is just the outline of the tab, because as you can see, if we look at the main sequence, we have two versions of it and we've got an outline that sort of trails behind. So those are the two versions of the tab. We then also need to create the planet which is going to be the most complicated part of uh, this sequence. So the first thing I did was actually create the sort of outline that you see here. We've got a little line that sort of shows the edge of the planet and for that I created this. It really is just a circle with a few details added to it and some layer effects to make it glow. I also needed to make a mask of that because we're going to have to mask this off so that we can hide different elements in front and behind. So I made a mask of that. And as you can see here, this is a black and white mask. So we've got a little bit of a fade on this edge and then a larger fade to the left hand side. Then we also need to create the actual planet itself. And as you can see on this original image, it's just a load of wavy lines. So that's exactly what I created. I made an image which was just a load of wavy lines. And I think by the time we distort that and add the curves and the effects over the top, we should end up with something that looks a lot like this original planet. So let's go back into hit film. So now we are back into HitFilm. We can start actually constructing this using those elements that I've made in Photoshop. None of this is actually going to be using 3D elements. It's just all going to be using 2D elements that are modified and distorted to make them look a little bit 3D. The first thing I want to do is sort out the moving Death Star part. So we're going to be replacing that with the Toyploy tab hole. So what I do is I bring in the uh, tab hole artwork that I've made. And to that, I just added a very simple animation, moving it from one point on the left to another point on the right. So over time, you can see it moves across the screen. This sequence is only going to be five seconds long, so it doesn't really need to move far or particularly fast. So that's a very simple animation to do. And as you can see at the moment, I have my reference image in the background just so that I can get things layered up and lined up and make sure everything looks as close to the original as I can. I've also set this layer to be additive. So if we uh, right click on that layer, we go on to the blend options at the top and I've made it additive so that anything behind it, it adds to. That just makes it look a little bit more computery like the original sequence that we have here. So once we've got that first tab hole moving left to right, we then need to add the trails that are left. So I've used the other image that I created, which is the one with the uh, slight outline. And I've just duplicated that a few times and then dropped it behind. So every time the uh, tab reaches a certain point, I unhide a version of that image. So if I just unhide all of these layers, you'll see what happens if I now play the sequence. You can see that every time the tab moves, another one is sort of left behind and then it fades out slowly. It's a very simple sequence to set up, but it's the basis for this whole animation. So if I hide the uh, reference artwork, you can see that this working how it should do. So that's a very simple setup but it gives you the basis of this whole sequence. We now need to start constructing the rest of the sequence. So for now, I'm just going to hide all of those because we don't need to see those. And it's sometimes easier to work on other things when there's nothing else confusing the shot. The next thing I want to do is bring in these blue crosses. And they are, again, they just move very slowly from left to right. So I bring in the image and as you can see, that is just the image. And again, I've just added a very simple animation to it. It's just moving slightly from left to right. 
but what we want to do is make it so it doesn't appear behind the planet. You can see here this planet doesn't have this, the uh, crosses behind it. In fact, they fade out. In fact, they fade out very subtly just on the uh, rim of the planet. So what I've done to uh, this layer is I've just added a layer mask. In fact, if I switch this on, you can see here is the layer mask and that just blurs out the edge of them. So on one side we have the full crosses and when it hits the layer mask there's a bit of a feather on the edge of that so they start to fade out and then on the left hand side they have completely disappeared. So now if I hide the uh, reference layer you can see that when we run that we've just got those crosses on the right hand side. In fact if I unhide all of the other layers that I've already created which are the uh, tab holes moving left to right you can see that these sequence is starting to come together and it's looking not too bad already. Right, let's hide all those again and we'll now start building the planet. The planet is going to be made up of multiple layers. So we'll start by adding the planet's rim, which was just that image that I made with a slight glow to it. Again, this I've set the uh, blend options to be additive because we really want all of these layers to add to the background. So uh, every layer adds on top of the next layer. And it just makes it glow and look a little bit more interesting. We also need to now start adding the planet surface, which is where it gets a bit complicated. So let me unhide the planet surface layer and switch off all of the effects so I can show what I've done. So this is the image that we created in Photoshop and it really is just some wavy lines. Now this is going to be the front surface of the planet because when you watch the animation there's actually two surfaces. The planet is see-through so you can see the back part of the planet is moving to the right and the front part of the planet is moving to the left. So again I've just added a simple animation to this layer moving it from right to left so you can see it just scrolls across the screen but it doesn't look like a planet at the moment. So what we need to do is add the curve to it and that's where the matte image comes in. So this is the matte image that I've made. I've already brought it into the composite shot. In fact, you can see it here if I unhide it. And all we do is we add a set matte effect to this layer and then we choose that matte image. So if I switch the uh, matte image on, you can see we now have a curve added to that piece of artwork. So as it moves, it fades in from one side and fades off to the other. But it doesn't really look like a planet. It just looks like something scrolling left to right. So what we do now is we add a bulge modifier and this sort of curves the image. So if I switch this on, you can see it's added a bit of a curve to it. So now when we run that image, it looks like it's sort of rolling around the edge of a ball and it's starting to look like a planet. And if we unhide the rim that we've already added, Let's see what that looks like now. So that's not looking too bad. You can see it's now starting to look like a planet. But as I said, the original version seems to have a back to it. So when you uh, looked at it, you can see the other side through it. So what we need to do is add another version. So let me hide the uh, front version that we've made. And I basically duplicated that and put it to the back and then made the animation of the uh, image move rather from right to left. This one now moves from left to right. So if I show you this one, you can see that one is moving across the screen the other way. And if we layer those two up, you can see what we end up with is it looks like that surface is now rolling around the edge of a planet. It's quite a subtle effect and it doesn't need to be perfect, but it really does give you the idea that this planet is rolling around. So now we've got that, we've pretty much got all the elements that we need to put this together. So I can start unhiding all of the things that I've created. So let's unhide the green tab hole. So that is the Death Star part. We can then also unhide the blue grid that goes in the background. And now if we run the sequence, you'll see it starts to look pretty much like uh, the sequence that you see in Star Wars. But we are missing this clock and the clock, I was thinking how to do this. Do I actually make a clock that works? And then in the end, I thought of a very lazy way to do it. And uh, built into HitFilm, there is a time code option. You can just add a time code. And although this doesn't look like the original clock that we see in the sequence, it's close enough. And actually when you add it to everything, it really just sort of finishes off the look of it. But everything is looking a little bit clean and a little bit perfect. So we now need to add a grade layer and add some effects to it to make this look more like the sort of distorted TV screen that we see in the movie. So I switch on a grade layer and you can see immediately we've got all of these lines and details. And these are just effects that you can add through HitFilm. So I've added a shake, I've added a glow, I've added some scan lines, I've added a vignette and a bit of brightness and contrast. In fact, if I switch all of these off and show you them one at a time, you'll see what they do. So the shake just adds a little bit of wobble so that the image is not steady. It's slightly moving around. It's a very subtle effect, but it's worth adding. I've then added a glow, which just makes all of these light areas glow a little bit more. If I switch that on and off, you can see the difference it makes. I've also added some scan lines. This makes it look like a TV. So we get slight sort of brightness and darkness in a line 
line and pattern going across everything. I've also added a vignette which just darkens the edges of the image just to sort of make it again look a bit more like a TV and then a bit more brightness and contrast just to make the glowing areas really glow. And that is the final sequence. All I need to do is add some sound effects and that's all done. So let's take a look at the finished thing. So there you go, that is the finished sequence that you will see edited into my videos over on Toy Ploy. It's nice to have little things like this that you can break up some of the longer videos. Generally, I mainly make intros for the channel just to add a bit of variation for each video. But sometimes when the videos are getting a bit longer, it's nice just to have a little break up along the sequence. And so this is one of the ones that I'll be adding to that catalogue just to be able to edit in and add a little bit more variation to my videos. So I hope this video has been of interest to you. If it has, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And if you've really enjoyed it, then head on over to my main channel, Toy Ploy, and subscribe there as well. Thanks for watching.